Hi everybody and welcome to a new exciting video in the audio signal processing for machine learning series. Last time we learned about a short time Fourier transform and spectrograms in a theoretical way. This time it's time to actually use Python and the audio processing library Libreza to uh, extract spectrograms from audio files. So let's get started. So I already wrote a, a Jupyter notebook here. And so I'm gonna just like run through it and I'm gonna tell you like what I'm doing and the different steps like to actually extract uh, spectrograms. So the first thing that we wanna do is just like import some uh, like libraries. So we import OS so that we can uh, load audio, like our audio files. We'll import Libreza, Libreza.display for uh, just like showing visualizing like the spectrograms and we'll import like numpy and matplotlib.py plot for um actually doing or just like plotting uh the spectrograms like in other results that we'll have okay so let me import all of this and then we want to just like load audio files with Libreza. So uh, we are going to be working with four different audio files. So the first one is just like a scale and uh, yeah, it's just like resides like at this path. Then we're going to uh, have um, uh, kind of like a 30 second snippet from Debussy, 30 second snippets from Red Hot Chili Peppers and 30 second snippet from uh, Duke Ellington. So we have like three different musical genres represented, some classical music with Debussy, rock music with the Red Hot Chili Peppers and jazz with Duke Ellington. Okay, but first thing, let's try to... <clears throat> listen to this music so or um so we get like an idea of what we're dealing with and so here we go so if you do ipd.audio and you pass the uh the file then you're going to be able to directly listen to the uh to the audio files in the jupyter notebook by the way this ipd comes from this import over here so you just like import ipython.display as ipd and then you can use it. Okay, so now let's listen to like this different uh, audio files. So the first one is going to be a uh, scale uh, played on a piano. Okay, so yeah, it's just repeated a couple of times. Then we have the music from Debussy, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers and from Duke Ellington. So let's listen. So if you guys followed along so far with the series, you probably already recognize this piece because we used it in a previous video. So here you have like a huge crescendo, right, with all of this string instruments. Right, you get the idea. So a very nice, smooth, uh, like string-driven uh, orchestral piece. And then we have a song from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Okay, you get the idea and probably you are also familiar with that song. Then moving on to this jazz piece from Duke Ellington, by Duke Ellington. Very smooth, right? Okay, you get the idea. So what we'll do is try to extract the uh, spectrogram from this and visualize them and compare them. Okay, so what we want to do first is just let you load the audio files with Libreza. So we've done this multiple times in earlier videos. Uh, so uh, what we do is just like Libreza.load and we pass like the name of the, uh, or the, the path to the file. What we get back is a signal, a NumPy array. And then we also get back the sample rate, which when it's defaulted is gonna be equal to 22,050 Hertz. Okay, so let's move on to this. Next step, what we can do, or what we should do, is extract the short time Fourier transform. And this is very easy with Libreza because we have a function that does that um, super quickly. So the first thing we want to do is just let's just set a couple of parameters. So we'll set the frame size equal to 2048 hertz, uh, samples, sorry. And the hop size is going to be equal to 512 samples. Again, 
these are quite typical parameters for like the frame size and the hop size. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly suggest you to go check out my previous video on the theory behind the short time Fourier transform. I'm just like taking for granted that you've watched that video or you are familiar with the short time Fourier transform. So I'm not going to get into details of what all of these parameters actually mean in this um, video. Okay, so let's move on. Now uh, I can extract the short time Fourier transform using this uh, function, which is great, uh, Librosa.stft, and then I should pass in the signal. And uh, the first thing that we'll see here and the spectrograms that we'll analyze is are with regard with the, with the scale just like to see uh, how that is represented in a spectrogram. And it's going to be easier to visualize than like all the other music that we've uh, listened earlier. Then we should pass the frame size and we should pass it. Uh, so with this keyword argument called N uh, dash FFT uh, and underscore FFT. And then we pass the hop uh, length um, keyword argument and we pass our hop size over here. Okay, so we do this and then now let's take a look at the shape of the short time Fourier transform. So as we uh, saw in the previous video, this is, is going to be like a bidimensional array and specifically like the first dimension is relative to the, the frequency. Uh, and so here we have like um, all the frequency bins and these, these are equal to like this number is equal to half the frame size plus one. So it's basically 2048 divided by two, which is 1024 plus one, 1025. Okay, so it checks out. Good. And here, uh, like on the columns, uh, the second dimension of this matrix, we have the um, number of frames. It's basically like the temporal bins. And in this case, we have like 342 temporal bins. And if you want to know how to get from uh, like a signal to like a certain number of um, frames just like to make that calculation I have like the formula in the previous uh, video regarding short time Fourier transform. Okay so now the next thing that we want to see is the actual type of the different items that we have in the uh, short time Fourier transform result or in the matrix. So here we just like take the item at uh, col uh, row zero column zero and as you can see, the type is a complex number. And this doesn't come as a surprise because the output of a short time Fourier transform is a series of like complex Fourier coefficients. And so, uh, yeah, so we expect that each of the items, which is a Fourier coefficient for a given uh, like frequency bin and a given like frame is a complex number. But now what we want to do is actually calculate the spectrogram. So we need to, to move from the short time Fourier transform to the spectrogram. So how do we do that? Well, that's easily done because we just like take the squared magnitude of the short time Fourier transform. So we just like use like this numpy.abs absolute value and we pass in the, um, the short time Fourier transform uh, results here and then we square the result and this is going to be equal to the spectrogram okay yeah not that let me move on let's take a look at the shape here and once again not surprisingly we have like this shape so 1025 number of pins and 342 uh, number of frames, which is the same that we used to have like with the short time Fourier transform result and that checks out because uh, all we're doing is just like taking the magnitude, the squared magnitude. So uh, the, the shape of the matrix uh, of the original ma matrix doesn't change. But what does change is the type of the items. In this case, we have uh, floats. And this makes sense because we are taking like the, the magnitude here. And so basically we are moving from the complex number to like a real number. And this is the spectrogram. And this is like what we can actually visualize um, uh, on a heat map. And so let's see how we can easily visualize the spectrogram uh, with uh, Librosa. And so here I wrote like a little function and here this is the signature. So you see uh, Y, capital Y is just like the um, 
uh, it's the spectrogram, then I pass in the sample rate, the hop length and the y axis. And here, like I'll default is let's say uh, linear. We'll see what this means like in a second. But before, let's just uh, take a look at what I do here. I just like instantiate um, a figure uh, specifying like the, the, the figure size here using like matplotlib. And then here comes the magic. We can use libroza.display.specshow to uh, visualize uh, any type of spectrogram-like um, signals. And so here, what uh, like this function expects is y, so basically like the um, spectrogram, then the uh, sample rate, the hop length, the x-axis, which is going to be equal to time. So we're going to have, like on the x-axis, we're going to have a like time. And on the y-axis, we're going to have like a type of um, representation that's uh, linear. And then I'm going to add a color bar here and you'll see what this does. It's basically like a legend that uh, provides us information about like the uh, how to map the colors into like the different like intensities like of the uh, of the signal of the amplitude. Okay, so now let me run this and now we can plot the spectrogram and I'll pass in the uh, spectrogram for like the scale scale like audio file. I'll pass in the sample rate and the hop size. And so let's see what happens here. And here we go. Our first visualization of a spectrogram. But this doesn't look great, does it? So obviously, like the idea here is that the the brighter the color and the more energy you have like in that uh, frequency bin, right? And so we see a little bit of like activity down here and it's repeated. And so probably you can guess that this is like the two scale, like the fundamental uh, frequencies of the scales. And in, in, indeed you see that these like tend to like run up. Uh, and it's repeated twice because if you remember, like in that audio file, we had the same scale repeated twice, but still like everything is black. So it means that it has like very, very little energy. So why is that the case? Well, it turns out that this is how sounds like work. So, uh, but, uh, it's like the way we actually perceive like these energies and amplitude is not really linear as is the case, like in this representation here, but it, it's actually uh, logarithmic. And so uh, to get like closer to the way we perceive a sound, we need to do a kind of uh, transformation of the uh, intensities, like of all the amplitudes here. And so we need to, to move like all of this like amplitudes from the uh, basic like linear representation to a logarithmic representation, which is like more perceptually significant. We can easily move from a, a linear representation of amplitude to a logarithmic one using uh, this uh, handy function from Libreza called power to dB, and dB stands for uh, decibels. Now, if you are not familiar with decibels, I suggest you to go check out this video where I talk about decibels and introduce them and explain like how they work. But basically, under the hood, what happens is that decibels are actually applying some kind of like logarithmic transformation. So when you use this power to dB, you're moving like from the power uh, representation like of the intensity like to uh, decibels. And so well, we do this and we get back a, a log amplitude uh, spectrogram here. And so we can ju then just like plot that with our function. And so plot spectrogram, instead of passing the actual like spectrogram of scale, we pass the log amplitude spectrogram. And again, we pass the sample rate and the hop size. Okay, so if we do that, we get this result, which is way better like, than the one that had we had before. So here we start to see like some uh, energy, like bursts like of energy, like down here. And as you can see here, probably like this, this is like a constant uh, like notes, then you move up, you move up, 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 up. So this probably is just like the fundamental frequencies for the scale uh, that we played. And if you're wondering about like all of this other kind of like burst uh, like of energies like at our higher frequencies those are uh, the harmonic components of the original of the fundamental uh, frequency for the scale now we have like twice the same thing because if you uh, remember like yeah we had twice the the scale like performed and so the same pattern is repeated uh, twice i 
I, I bet like they just like copy paste it like they're the same scale like uh, in the same uh, in the audio file. Okay, but here there's still something that's uh, like a little bit weird, which is like that on the frequency side. Uh, I mean, everything like is very squashed. And then at that, the reason why is that the case is because like we are using some kind of like a linear frequency representation, right? But if you followed along with the series in one of like the initial videos that we had in the series, I explained that the way we perceive uh, frequency is a logarithmic, it's not a uh, linear. So what we want to do probably uh, to have a representation of the spectrogram that's more kind of like in line uh, with the way that we perceive um, a frequency is to actually apply some logarithmic transformation on the frequency as well as the amplitude. So how do we do that? Well, that's extremely simple uh, with Libroso. And so what we want to do is to create a log frequency, log spectrogram uh, re um, representation. And so what we do like in the, the function that I wrote, you just like pass this uh, keyword argument of Y axis and you put it to log, but what this actually does under the hood is uh, we are just like passing that in uh, this like y axis in the libreza.display.spec show uh, function and we pass it here. And so uh, the default that we were using was like a y axis is equal to linear. And in other words, we're using like a linear representation of the frequency. But if we put it equal to log, we're going to be using like a log representation of frequency. Okay, so now let's take a look at this and see how it looks like. Okay, good. So as you can see here, we have a uh, log uh, representation and now like this is like way more like spaced out. And as you can see, so this makes a lot of sense because like we start with a uh, basically like the middle C or like C4, the, the central C on the keyboard, which is like this note here. Then we go up to a D. So we do a C, D, then up to E, F, G, A, B and then back to C, but at the octave above. And so we can clearly see all of the scale going up here. And it has also like some a slightly like different duration, like each note is played with a different duration. So I'll just like play you back like the, the scale once again, so you can notice that, okay? Okay. And it's this, right? Da, da, di, da, 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 right? Okay. Uh, good. So the next thing that I want to do is just like visualize all the other songs from, yeah, the different genres. So like the uh, classical uh, orchestral piece from uh, Debussy, the Red Hot Chili Pepper like rock song and the jazz ballad from uh, Duke Ellington. Okay, so I'll quickly go explain what I do here, but it's basically what what we've already done in a more extended way uh, with the with the scale. Uh, but basically, what I do here is I extract the short time Fourier transform as a first thing, and then uh, I just uh, get the uh, magnitude the squared magnitude and then apply this power to decibels and then we get these signals for Debussy, for Red Hot and for Duke and these are the log spectrograms for these different uh, like songs and then I just like pass those like into like this plot spectrogram function and I ask to have a log representation of the frequency and so what we're going to see is a log frequency log amplitude uh, spectrogram. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so the first one is the spectrogram for the classical music piece. This is the Red Hot Chili Peppers one, and this is like the jazz piece. Okay, so is there any major difference that, yeah, we can see just like straight away? Yes, there is. So in the case of classical music or this orchestral piece with a lot of like smooth string sounds, you see that the Kind of like the distribution of the energy like in the different frequencies it tends like to change right quite a lot and obviously the redder 
uh, in this spectrogram, like the the uh, the color and the more energy you have, like in that frequency at that specific like moment in time, right? And uh, so here, as you see, like if you remember, we had like a huge crescendo, so a kind of like increase in intensity. Uh, towards like the the center uh, of like the the the, the snippet uh, of that like the BC uh, orchestral piece, and here you have it down here. So you have like higher uh, frequency that get like uh, kind of like higher energies like this. And then if you listen to the end of the piece, it tends to kind of like fade away, and you can kind of visualize that because like the uh, this uh, colors tends to like kind of like fade out. It's uh, they are not as red as they used to be like. In this central part, for example. Now let's compare this kind of like smooth spectrogram to the red hot chili pepper one, right? This is this feels like a w way more kind of I, I would say like like a pattern like that repeats itself like quite a lot, and we have a lot of like activity in the lower. Uh, like frequencies and this has also to do uh, with the presence of uh, like uh, a, a kick drum so you have like this bass um, kind of like the, the, the snare like with the, with the, with the bass drum uh, kind of uh, creating like this typical like rock pattern and you can see it here like in with the, the, all of this activity here you have like a lot of repetition so take a look for example at this like patterns like here like in red like this. Okay, and so you see that with the rock piece, you have like a lot of energy, like in the lower um, frequencies, and you have like these patterns that you can kind of recognize, and that's because the music is based off like patterns, rhythmical, as well as like um, melodic ones. Okay, and, and then you have like the jazz piece uh, by Duke Ellington, and here I could say that's a little bit like of the two worlds, right? So you still have like certain patterns that you can clearly see. And that's because we, we had like some kind of like a basic like a groove with a drum kit and with bass. Um, but uh, still like it's kind of like more fluid, right? It's not as strict as the rock uh, piece by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, right? Okay, so here, like at a glance, you, you can see that spectrograms can reveal a lot about different musical genres. Obviously, like this is just like a, an anecdotal uh, example, but more, yeah, more often than not, these are like certain features that you actually see across different genres, like when you like look at their spectrograms. So you can have like a, a fair guess if you're experienced in uh, visualizing spectrograms, whether like you're dealing with a classical music kind of like piece or you're dealing with a, a rock uh, like ballad or whatever. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Next time we're going to move on to another flavor of spectrograms called male spectrograms, which are more psychological, perceptually relevant than the royal spectrograms that we've seen here. So if you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed and you would like to see more videos like this, well, just subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, as always, just like leave them in the comment section below. I hope I'll see you next time. Cheers.